Welcome to Aging Insight with your host, John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is brought to you by Aging Insight. I'm Lisa Schollmeyer and this is my partner John Ross and we are elder law attorneys and we are based right here in the Arklatex and so you know we are able to give people in our community answers to their questions about aging right here at home and you know our big uh, our, our big idea for you all is that you get the information you need to be able to age and retire on your own terms. And uh, you know, so we're here to give you that information to avoid conflicts, to help you uh, plan for that retirement in those aging years, to help you not be a burden on your friends and family, and to stay in your home as, as long as you can, and to not go broke in the process. So you know, a big part of all of this with Aging Insight, you know, has to do with one of our biggest resources that uh, folks that are aging have, and that is typically their families. And so we wanted to discuss issues that come up within families when we're dealing with uh, caring for an aging uh, loved one and also uh, dealing with the estate and property of that uh, now perhaps deceased person uh, so that we can avoid some family conflicts. That's the uh, that's the goal. You know, uh, we have in our practice we have seen some very unfortunate situations where, as that parent or or loved one, whoever they are, as they as they age, as they become more dependent on others, as they need that extra help, um, as the expenses go up and the care needs go up. And all of these other things that the stress of dealing with that, the stress of, of the caregiving, the financial stress, and, and what's going on with the family, sometimes you end up with arguments, suspicions, all kinds of real ugliness. And in some cases, that ugliness can wreak havoc on the family. And, and I just tell you, it's not good for anybody. Uh, you know, and so what we like to do is, is we like to try to figure out what are some of the ways that you can avoid some of those conflicts. And, and that's really, that's what the program's going to be about today. Yeah, right. So, John, I really wanted to start out by first by saying, you know, um, the, probably the most important thing you can do and the, the first thing you need to do is, uh, you know, we're all on a, a journey and we're all going to get older. You know, you're going to be older tomorrow than you were today. And there's just, you know, everybody is on that same path. And what the biggest mistake I see people make is that they just don't take the time to make some decisions and plan while they are at the best they can be, which, you know, uh, you know, maybe the best you can be is today. Maybe you're a little, uh, a little more forgetful tomorrow or a little weaker tomorrow. So, you know, that's the first issue because what I see most frequently is an individual has waited until they are in a more compromised position. Uh, you know, they're more dependent and then they want to try to make some of these decisions and sometimes they just don't have the energy or the will to make the decisions that they would have made, you know, if they'd have been a little bit younger when they started that process. Yeah, there's really no question about that. You know, when you're making decisions, you've got to do it ahead of time. And here's here's where a lot of time, you know, you know this. This is not this is not anything new. You've been thinking about this. You've been saying to yourself, "Oh, I need to make some decisions." You might even go so far as to tell somebody. 
You might, uh, you might be talking to that daughter or talking to you and your spouse, and you're telling each other what you want. The problem is that when it comes time for those people to actually step up and start helping or start doing things, you know, having told somebody doesn't cut it. You know, in so many cases, you've got to have it in writing. If you want one daughter to be able to make health care decisions for you, if you want a son to be able to write checks or make business decisions or talk to the phone company or sign your tax return, those decisions, you know, it's great to, to tell that child that, that, you've, that you want them to do it, but if you don't put it in writing, then, you know, imagine, you, you know, you've got these two kids and one of them is saying, well, mama told me that she wanted me to be in charge. Well, you know, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make that other child feel very good. You know, they, they're already on edge and they're thinking, well, why is, my, why is my brother saying this? Is he just trying to get to mom? Is he trying to cut me out? Uh, you know, mom never told me any of that. Uh, you know, so it's got to be in writing. It's one thing to tell people, um, and, I'm, and communication is key, but you've got to put those things in writing. You've got to say who you want. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think if John and I had a dollar for every time someone uh, came to us and said, well, you know, uh, Papa told me or Mom told me uh, this or that, if we just had a dollar every time someone came in, we'd be retired right now. <laughs> It, it, it's a it's a frequent occurrence and our answer is always the same you know I understand that you were told that however it's meaningless it doesn't mean a thing particularly if your brother or sister or cousins are fighting uh, about it uh, you know what somebody said at Thanksgiving two years ago just does not matter that's I don't right. know that I could say that any more clearly. <laughs> no, it's got to be it's got to be in writing. Which kind of brings up the 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 next issue with all of this, which is if you're going to start putting these things in writing, you know, it, we can kind of start out by talking about who's going to be uh, making decisions for you. And and here you get into things like which we've talked about before, powers of attorney uh, for business, powers of attorney for medical care access to medical records, you know, you've got to appoint people to these jobs. You've got to say, here's who I want to do these sort of things. And your family dynamic is going to come into play here. Whether or not you appoint one child, whether you appoint multiple children, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. And depending on the way you do it, based on your family structure can either make it work out great or it can cause a tremendous problem. So uh, that's you're probably the next thing we need to talk about. Yeah, you know, so we'll take a little break here and when we come back, we're gonna talk about how your individual family dynamics really should be taken into consideration as you make some of these decisions. With my dad, it was, it was in a hospital setting. Um, and in his situation, he fell into renal failure. He also helped us make the decision to be on hospice. I have to admit, it took a, a huge weight off our shoulders for him to be willing. That offered us a lot of comfort, along with the hospice company itself, but it, it gave us closure and it helped us through the entire process. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together, but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. 
Windsor Cottage offers a home environment with available assistance. Our mission is to provide ultimate care through dedication and personal attention. Residents enjoy the opportunity to continue their independent lifestyle with dignity. They thrive as they're able to live without the pressures of the hustle and bustle of daily living. Windsor Cottage is committed to a family atmosphere where residents can enjoy companionship and the pleasures of daily activities. At Windsor Cottage, we live the difference. Welcome back to Aging Insight, everybody. I'm John Ross. This is Lisa Schollmeyer, and you're watching Aging Insight. And today we're talking about ways that you might uh, reduce family conflicts as it relates to you and your aging process. And kind of before the before the break, we were talking about, uh, for example, um, naming people as a as an agent on powers of attorney. And we, a lot of times, we have seen this particular thing cause animosity between, in particular, children. You know, where you have multiple children um, and, and trying to figure out who do you appoint. You know, and so, for example, you might have one person that you want to do the job, that you trust to do the job. So the first thing is putting it in writing. We've already talked about it. It doesn't matter what you say, you've got to put it in writing. But the second part is, is making it clear that that's the person you want um, and, and whether or not any of these other kids have any say-so in it. Well, you know, a, a lot of times we, we talk to seniors and they're worried that uh, they, they, they don't want to disappoint a child. They don't want a child to think that 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 the parent loved them any less because they didn't appoint them as a decision maker or someone to handle their business or their medical decisions. And so, you know, the seniors are really reluctant to make these decisions and put them in writing because, you know, uh, they feel like if they put it in writing and the other children see it, then you know that's going to cause a problem. But believe me, they'll get over that. You know, you need to make the decision on what you think is best going to assist you, who you trust uh, to handle certain business affairs for you. You know, make the decision, put it in writing, everybody will get over it, but then you will have in place what you are most comfortable with. Um, so some of the other children say, you know, hey, uh, mom, dad, just put us all on there to make decisions and, uh, you know, John, is that a good idea, or are there didn't are certain family situations that maybe that works for, maybe well, it doesn't? You know, if if you've got the type of family dynamic where everybody gets along marvelously, you know, the one thing about say a, a power of attorney is that you know it. it we don't know when that person or people are going to need to do things for you. We don't know where you'll be. Maybe you're here locally. Maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're visiting the child that lives in Minnesota. Um, and so we don't necessarily know when, you're, when or where you're going to need that assistance. And if you have children that get along very well, having a situation where they each could, acting alone, make decisions for you if you can't do it, that can be a very flexible, very easy situation. But notice that that is probably... That's one of those situations where it absolutely has to be a situation where the family gets along marvelously. You know, and be honest about it. You know your family better than anybody. You were there when they were kids. <laughs> you know whether or not they can get along. You know whether or not they, they work together. Do they talk all the time? Are they more like friends? Are they, are they more like friends than family? You know, those sort of things. If that's the case, great. But don't make this sort of decision where I have a, a person, they'll come into the office and they'll say, well, you know, I've got two kids and these two kids don't get along at all and they can never agree on anything hardly. So I want to appoint both of them where they have to agree to do anything. And that way, no one of them can do it. They have to agree. Well, let me tell you what the result is of that. The result is that when you need somebody to act for you, nobody can do it because they can't you already know they can't get along and yet you force them into a position where they have to and and just because you want them to doesn't mean they're going to do it 
In fact, what ends up happening is since neither of them can make a decision, they can't agree, they can't get along, it'll ultimately end up landing in the court. That's right. And, you know, uh, we, have a, we have a philosophy that, frankly, if, if you're at the courthouse steps, then, you know, somebody's already lost something, whether that's the uh, attorney fees or sleepless nights or, or whatever. So we always try to avoid that if possible. And you can avoid that if, if, you just, if you're just honest with yourself in making decisions about uh, what kind of assistance you want to get from whom in your family who's capable of doing that um, and who's capable of working with others, uh, you know, just be honest with yourself and uh, get that in writing. That's right. And, you know, one of those situations is, is that I'll have some folks and they'll come in and they'll say, well, John, okay, I've heard you say be honest about it and, and I'm going to be brutally honest about it, which is I don't trust any of them to do it. Or, or I think that they will not get along and that it doesn't matter who I appoint, that the others will be unhappy about it. You know, there's, there's this assumption that we have to appoint those children, that, that just because of the fact that they're the children, that they should be the ones in charge if you can't do it. But you know, that's just not the case. You get to make these decisions. It doesn't have to be the children, and, and no matter how much they pressure you, it still is not their choice. It's your choice. If you have individuals that you trust, then, then appoint those individuals, keeping in mind, of course, that if those individuals are close to your age, then they may be having the same health problems you are at that time. If you don't have individuals, though, there is another option. And, and of course, that is going with a third party like a bank or a CPA or somebody in the financial services industry who can, is used to managing assets and making sure bills are paid. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I like you bringing up that point that it doesn't have to be your children um, who are uh, appointed as decision makers if you can't make your own decisions. Uh, because, you know, I've had quite a few folks tell me that, uh, you know, uh, their kids are still finding their way in life or they've messed up their own lives so much that, uh, you know, they just don't trust the kids or they don't uh, feel like that they can handle uh, dealing with a parent's uh, health issues and aging issues. So it's good to know that you do not have to appoint uh, family members to do this. Um, but now, so we've been talking a, a bit about appointing decision makers. If you become in a state that you know you can't make your decisions as well, but you know one of the things, the other place we see a lot of family conflict is you know after you pass and you know again maybe you've told some family members some things about who you wanted to have what or you didn't make any plans really at all and now the the kids are really at it uh, over property and over stuff and and you know John uh, years ago uh, we had a client uh, say to us that you know you never really know somebody until you share an inheritance with Absolutely. them. Absolutely <laughs> that is that it really is true and and I've had people in the office who were just they were just shocked at how their brother sister aunt uncle whoever it was how they behaved following that death and you've got to understand that that with the stress of losing that person that you care about with their own personal issues you just never know what that uh, how that situation is going to uh, turn out when the time comes so one thing you need to do is look down the road and say okay are there some things that I could do now that would maybe keep that fight from happening then and and there's things that you can build into your documents. There's things that you can build into your estate planning to help that. So why don't we take uh, one more break and when we come back we'll, we'll talk about some of those suggestions. All our moments should be cherished. SEMA Hospice provides comfort care when you need it most with compassion, dignity, and respect. Along with Jordan Health Services, SEMA Hospice provides compassionate continuity of care. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Hi, I'm John Ross. 
elder law attorney and board member for the Alzheimer's Alliance, and welcome to Our Place. Our Place is a day program designed to provide rest and relief for the caregivers of people with Alzheimer's and related dementias. Our Place is a safe environment where our friends benefit from socialization in a home-like environment. Alzheimer's is devastating and affects over 17,000 families in our area. To find out how Our Place can benefit you, please visit our website. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end of life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community, by the community. Welcome back to Aging Insight. I'm Lisa Schollmeyer and I'm here with John Ross. And today we've been talking about avoiding family conflicts. And, you know, so far we've been talking about, you know, do your planning, you know, while you're at your highest and best, put it in writing. Uh, we've also talked about, you know, be honest with yourself about the dynamics of your family and who is better equipped to be that responsible person that can assist you um, as you age. And then in this uh, last segment today, we wanted to talk about some tools you may have to help make sure that you avoid family conflict even after you're gone. You know, and uh, probably one of the biggest mistakes I see uh, people make is, you know, if they have a contentious family situation, you know, as a person gets older, it's amazing to me how often uh, younger family members will uh, start talking about, well, you know, uh, mom, when you're gone, I, I would like that curio cabinet in your, in your china. And, and, you know, hey, dad, when you're gone, I want to make sure and have that 30-06 that, you know, you took me hunting with for the first time. And a lot of those discussions, again, uh, are had verbally. Uh, but, you know, if children are in conflict, a lot of times seniors particularly, as you get older, I think you try to avoid conflicts even more <laughs> than maybe you did when you were younger. And so a lot of times seniors just avoid uh, doing the planning, having these discussions. And then they say, you know what, my, my, da my daughter Jennifer, she, she handles her brothers and sisters fine. I'm just going to tell her that it's going to be all on her shoulders and she I'm going to tell her what I want. She'll take care of it. I don't want to have to deal with everybody um, and that'll be the end of it. And, and John, does that work out very well? <laughs> no. um, you know, there's a couple of things there. One is is you if you do have somebody that you really trust and that you think will do a good job that's great but give them some direction give them tell them what you want them to do and then of course put it in writing you know just saying oh well i know that they'll take care of it they'll do it the way i want well a couple of things one they may perfectly well be willing to do that but you're assuming that that person is still around. You know, something could happen and that person ends up not being able to handle the stuff that you've lined out for them. They may not be able to be that executor or that trustee or that agent under that power of attorney because maybe they have predeceased you or, or maybe they've had their own health issues. And so if you have it in writing, you can, you can put out some instructions as to what you want that person to do and then if that person's not around, then the next person can still read those instructions. Of course, the other side of this is to make sure that the person that you're, you're choosing actually wants the job. Yeah, that's right. You know, so often, it, you know, if you have a contentious family situation and, you know, maybe your good friend and neighbor uh, that you feel, you feel like knows what you want, you put it in writing, they're going to do it. But you know what? If, 
if after you're gone, this this person who was your good friend, who, who wants to honor you by doing this for you, but they get attacked from all sides by um, your children or grandchildren, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the legacy of your friendship is just not worth a day in, day out attacks as they're trying to uh, finish up your business and they may not want the job or they may not keep the job if it really becomes a problem. Right, so you know, you need to have the conversation with the person that you're appointing. Make sure that, that they actually want the job and if they have con some concerns, you know, a lot of times these, these jobs, being a trustee, being an executor, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of responsibility behind those. Uh, there's lots of work to be done. You know, are you going to compensate them? Are you going to pay them? Um, or do you want them to do it for free? But either way, these are some of the things that you need to think through. Now, when it comes to actually, you know, one of the things we, one of the phrases we like to use is taking the dog out of the fight. Which basically the idea is, is are there some things that maybe you can put in there to help resolve problems before they even come up? And, and there are some things that whether you're talking about a power of attorney, whether you're talking about a will or a trust, there are some things that you can put in there. One of the most common is the idea of a no contest clause. And this would be a, a phrase, for example, in a will or trust that says that if anybody fights about it, they lose their share. That can be pretty harsh. Um, now, I will tell you that they're pretty hard to enforce, especially under the current law. But sometimes just the threat, just the idea can bring people and, and make them a little bit more amenable to negotiations. But the other things is there's some other things that you can build in. Mediation clauses requiring that anybody sit down with a mediator before filing any of those sort of suits. Um, having third, in, independent third parties like, uh, for example, appointing a geriatric care manager who can give some independent advice related to your medical care that maybe that can help resolve some of these disputes between what one child thinks is best and what the other thinks is best. So there are some things if you anticipate these sort of problems that you can build in to that planning, but it's all going to be very unique to you. That's right. You know, I would have to say, um, it, you know, that's why there's no one size fits all. There's no form out there. There's no cookie cutter um, document out there because every family is different. And the dynamics of your family uh, are a have a big impact on the type of planning that you need to do as you age and then the planning you need to do for your estate to deal with your property after you're gone. That's right. Well, you know, we can only cover so much in, in our short period of time right there with you. And so if you have more questions, you know, you can always call us during our live radio show, which is every Saturday at noon on 107.1. And that's live call-in radio. You can call in and ask questions yeah. about what you heard on this show, and we can give a little bit more detailed answers. Of course, you can always find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash aging insight. And you can find me on Twitter at TXK Elder Law. All right, well, we'll see you next week for another episode of Aging Insight. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's Aging Insight program with John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by 